नमस्कार आई एम थैंकफुल टू सृजन फाउंडेशन फॉर कॉलिंग मी हियर टुडे व्हेन राहुल जी कॉन्टैक्टेड मी फर्स्ट एंड ही गेव मी अ बुके ऑफ चॉइसेस फॉर स्पीकिंग ऑन अ टॉपिक आई थॉट दैट आई वुड स्पीक ऑन अ टॉपिक व्हिच इज क्वाइट करंट दीज डेज इन फैक्ट क्वाइट फैशनेबल इन सम सर्कल्स एंड दैट टॉपिक इज कॉल्ड हिंदू पाकिस्तान so um, talking about uh, hindu pakistan i actually went a little deeper into it as to why people are trying to deride us indians by saying that we want to become hindu pakistan because if we try and uh, deconstruct this term then pakistan uh, semantically means land of the pure of course we have a visceral dislike for this term and i can trace the visceral dislike for this term to pakistan as a territory being taken out of the greater indian territory we have uh, this notion of india which is uh, the entire subcontinent or uh, as uh, the colonial uh, especially the, the the mughal historian called it they called it barre sagir so sagir means uh, small so subcontinent the small continent so barre sagir or the subcontinent or uh, as they said in uh, vishnu puran उत्तर युद्र से हिमाद्रेश दक्षिण दैट इज दि ऐडिया ऑफ इंडिया दैट वी हलवेज हेड एंड पार्ट ऑफ दैट टेरिटरी बींग टेकन आउट ऑफ इंडिया वॉज समथिंग दैट दि इंडियन साइके कुड नेवर कम टू टर्म्स विथ एंड इवन नाउ वी हैव दिस अखंड भारत मूवमेंट एंड पीपल लाइक टू गो बैक एंड टॉक अबाउट अखंड भारत एंड देर ऑल्सो पीपल हु वॉन्ट टू रिस्टोर दि अखंड भारत सो दिस term pakistan is basically detested by indians because of its territorial connotations or if you really uh, try and deconstruct it pakistan means land of the pure so you have uh, what is called a classical pakistan a classical land of the pure which exists as a territory right now and uh, when you say hindu pakistan so actually means hindu land of the pure so today i am going to talk about the differences between the classical land of the pure as a territory and the idea that has been floated about what is called the hindu land of the pure and i am going to put forth a proposal for the consideration of this august audience that hindu pakistan is actually a much better idea than pakistan it may sound uh, a little funny a little unique a little strange a little opaque whatever you may call it but this is going to be the summum bonum of my contention today so let us start by first discussing what is classical pakistan now how is the idea of this uh, pakistan classical pakistan which ultimately fructified into the territory of pakistan how this originated now what i'll do is because if i go too deeply into it and i don't want to go into 6th and 7th century that will be too far back so i will uh, take it from uh, a little post aurangzeb because what happened after uh, aurangzeb's uh, or the mughal empire declined there was an uh, ascendance of the marathas and uh, marathas not only started taking over large parts of india they nearly subjugated the 
Mughal king to the status of a vassal. The situation was such that uh, from the red fort, you, you would find two flags simultaneously fluttering from the red fort. One was of course the Mughal flag and the other was the Maratha flag and the real power lay with the Marathas. The Mughal emperor could not move an inch, could not move a finger without the approval of the Marathas. So it was at that time that uh, the idea of the pure struck and there was a guy called Shah Waliullah, I don't know whether you have uh, uh, heard of him. Uh, Shah Waliullah was a, a classmate of the famous Abdul Wahab. Uh, I am sure most of you must have heard of Abdul Wahab and the Wahhabi ideology. Shah Waliullah was uh, educated in Arabia along with uh, Abdul Wahab and uh, he found it absolutely repugnant that a non-believer could rule over the land of the pure as he thought the Mughal Empire represented the land of the pure. So, Paak ke upar kafir ka raj ye bilkul kisi bhi tarah se Shah Waliullah ko bardash nahi tha. Around the same time, the British were uh, moving their forces towards Bengal and uh, this was also around the same time when uh, in Mysore, Hyder Ali was uh, coming to power and was later succeeded by Tipu Sultan. So you had uh, two simultaneous movements for land of the pure, one was Shah Waliullah and the other was Tipu Sultan. Nearly simultaneous, a little bit, um, you can say, a decade or two here and there. So, Shah Waliullah was the one who formed that alliance between Ahmad Shah Abdali and uh, Najibullah of uh, Rohel Khan and uh, Asafuddullah of uh, Awadh. He was the one who gathered them together and ultimately the Battle of Panipat was a result of machinations of Shah Waliullah. After the Marathas were defeated in 1761, that is a battle that we know very well. But the aftermath was that uh, Amr Shah Abdali was not able to secure that victory into a firm foothold and he was so badly harassed by the Marathas that he ultimately had to leave India. There was also some kind of a rebellion of uh, rebellion uh, within uh, Afghanistan in his territory. So he had to go back and uh, the Marathas reigned supreme again and not only reigned supreme, they actually spread their empire from Katak to Atak. As they say, Katak se Atak tak Maratha Samarajya tha. So from Katak to Atak, Atak is uh, that place uh, on the Indus which was uh, supposed to be the traditional boundary of uh, India. Beyond that, uh, it was always uh, uh, Gandhar and uh, I think except under Mauryan Empire and sometimes during uh, the Mughal Empire, most of the time it was always not a part of the Indian kings or Indian kingdoms. After this, Tipu Sultan once again attempted to create a land of the pure in the south. And that was the time that he also wrote to the Afghan king and not only to the Afghan king, he also wrote to the caliph and he said that we need to establish this land of the pure in the land of the unbelievers, the infidels or the kafirs. Therefore, I need your assistance. Of course, the assistance was not forthcoming because you had uh, a very powerful Maratha empire in between. Ultimately, a combination of Maratha, Nizam and uh, the British, uh, they defeated Tipu Sultan and that was the end of the first dream of uh, the land of the pure post-Mughal empire. The uh, next attempt was made by a guy called um, Sayyid Ahmad Barelvi. You know, this is different from 
احمد رضا بریلوی بیکاز احمد رضا بریلوی از دا ون ہو فاؤنڈیڈ دا بریلوی سیکٹ دا سید احمد بریلوی از ایکچولی فرام رائے بریلی از ناٹ فرام بریلی پراپر بٹ سی اسٹل کال سید احمد بریلوی ہی واز اے ڈسائپل آف شاہ ولی اللہ اینڈ ہی اگین فاؤنڈیڈ ابہارنٹ دیٹ کافر شوڈ بی رولنگ دی لینڈ آف پنجاب وچ ہی تھاٹ شوڈ بی لینڈ آف دا لینڈ آف دا پیور بیکاز مہاراجا رنجیت سنگھ امپائر واز دیئر سو He was the one who went to Punjab, he gathered up his forces and he went to Punjab and uh, he did what is called a jihad against Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Now this uh, has carried on after that, uh, after uh, Raza Barelvi in the 19th century, his uh, movement was around uh, say 1820s and 1830s, that was the time. After the collapse of the Sikh empire of uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, then we had uh, uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, uh, he started out with a madarsa in Aligarh. That the madarsa was then converted into the, what is called the Anglo-Oriental College. that Anglo-Oriental College later became a illegal Muslim university, uh, as we see it today. The two-nation theory was formally proposed and propounded by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan in the illegal Anglo-Oriental College. And it has solid foundation. It has foundation in these Islamic scriptures. Because in uh, uh, Islamic scriptures, uh, it is even written that you cannot be friends with Uh, non-believer. This is, uh, uh, I am not exaggerating, it is, I think, uh, the third surat, 28th ayat, 328, Quran 328. And there are a lot of other verses, of course, this is uh, not uh, uh, the topic to propound uh, uh, shariat. But uh, the concept of The entire Ummat, or in Arabic as they call it Ummah. I think a lot of people do not understand these little nuances. So I'll just do a little digression and uh, clear it up. Wherever you find this uh, uh, A in the end, that is actually the Arabic pronunciation. So if they are writing Sharia, that is an Arabic pronunciation. So when you write it in Urdu, which is, uh, which has a uh, its roots more in Persian. So you um, call it Shariat. So Ummah is Ummat, Sharia is Shariat. And <clears throat> uh, there are also a lot of other nuances. There's become, it's become a fashion to use the Arabic pronunciation these days. Uh, I'll be using only the Urdu Persian uh, pronunciation in uh, my talk today. So um, uh, according to Shariat, The Ummat is one and uh, it is the holy duty of uh, every member of the Ummat to spread it by any means. So it is called uh, Jihad. Uh, of course, uh, there are people who do try to rationalize uh, Jihad as the bigger jihad and the smaller jihad, the jihad e akbar and jihad e asar, you will find a lot of, uh, when you confront them with this concept of jihad, then they will try and rationalize it. But uh, there is no mention of uh, this kind of categorization anywhere in the Sharia. The only kind of jihad that is mentioned is what is called jihad fi sabilillah. That is jihad in the way of Allah. And that means spreading the word of Allah through force. And uh, When I come to the territory of Pakistan, I will dwell on it with a little more, in, in a little more detail. So, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was the original proponent of the two-nation theory, that um, Muslims are a separate nation. Then, uh, Muhammad Iqbal carried it forward. Muhammad Iqbal was initially uh, a very, uh, what is called, he was a little romanticized by the Indian past and uh, 
ہی ایون کمپوز وٹ ایوری بڑی نو دے قومی ترانہ سارے جہاں سے اچھا ہندوستان ہمارا واٹ پیپل ڈو ناٹ نو از دیٹ ود ان اے فیو ایئرز آف کمپوزنگ دا ترانہ ہی ہم سیلف ڈس اونڈ اٹ اینڈ ہی کمپوز اندر ترانہ از کال ملی ترانہ ملی ترانہ دی کانسیپٹ آف امت از اگین ری انفورسڈ اینڈ اٹ سیز مسلم ہے ہم وطن ہے سارا جہاں ہمارا گوز لائک دس چینو عرب ہمارا چینو عرب ہمارا ہندوستاں ہمارا مسلم ہے ہم وطن ہے سارا جہاں ہمارا ان فیکٹ ساہر لدھیانی ایون روٹ اے اسپوف آن دس اف سم پیپل آر انٹرسٹیڈ ان ان دی موویز دین دے وڈ ہیو ہرڈ دس سانگ ویئر ہی ری پلیس دی لیٹر اسٹینز آس از اینڈ سیز رہنے کو گھر نہیں ہے سارا جہاں ہمارا سو دیٹ واز اے اسپوف آن دس ملی ترانہ آف اقبال اینڈ اقبال ہی کیپ لوکنگ فار ڈسائپلس آف کورس ہی واز کوائٹ اکلیکٹک ان اسٹیس ان ہی ایون ڈیبلڈ ود لٹل بٹ آف اسپرچولٹی بٹ ہی گیو اٹ اپ پیڑی سمن اینڈ بیکیم دی بیسک آئیڈیولاگ آف پاکستان ہی واز دا ون ہو پرسویڈیڈ محمد علی جنہ ٹو کم بیک محمد علی جنہ ہیڈ گیون اپ انڈیا فار گڈ اینڈ ہی واز انجوائنگ اے ویری گڈ پریکٹس ان برٹن ہی واز دا ون ہو پرسویڈیڈ ہم ٹو کم بیک and um, i don't think i need to dwell very long on the history after that and how muhammad ali jinnah and uh, rahmat ali and others mostly the uh, educated and uh, wealthier part of uh, muslim community they pitched for a land of the pure they drew their inspiration from the arabic tales all the if you, if you read the uh, 1945 46 speeches of the muslim league leaders they're full of the arabic lords and the arabic battles and uh, all the uh, great battles of uh, arabia and the prophet are referred there in fact the direct action day of uh, 16th august 1946 was uh, inspired by the battle of badr 17th ramzan that even the day was the same 17th ramzan battle of badr battle of badr was that uh, epoch making battle where uh, the uh, armies of prophet has finally defeated the umayyads so the territory of pakistan finally came into being and uh, how is the territory of pakistan is done a lot of people uh, try and rationalize uh, uh, the territory of pakistan as a secular territory even our uh, good friend jaswant singh ji also did it on the basis of uh, a speech that he delivered in uh, i think the i'm not sure whether it was the constituent assembly or uh, general gathering the day was 11th august 1947 Uh, that is often cited as uh, Jinnah's commitment to secularism. Of course, it is all false because soon after that, he even wrote to the founder of uh, Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan al-Wanna, telling him that uh, the principles of Muslim Brotherhood of an Islamic nation were actually his inspiration. So there was a lot of double talk and double dealing. But ultimately, what is the motto of today's state of pakistan that is what is important when we are discussing the ideological foundation of pakistan so not just the past i have just tried to do a brief historical tracing a historical trace but what is the present situation what is the present ideological position of the state of pakistan Now we know that uh, the state of Pakistan is a democracy only in name and the establishment is basically the Pakistan army. Therefore, it is very educative to look at the motto of the Pakistan army. What is the motto of Pakistan army? Anyone knows? The motto of Pakistan army is Taqwa, Iman, Jihad Fee Sabilillah. 
this is the motto of the institution that runs the state of Pakistan. This is actually the official motto of the Pakistan establishment. Because establishment in Pakistan is indistinguishable from Pakistan army. Now what is taqwa? Taqwa is trust. What is Iman? Iman is faith in Islam. I think a lot of us uh, very loosely use this term called Imandar. So Imandar is basically an Arabic term which means faith in Islam. So Iman is faith in Islam. So Taqwa, Iman and Jihad fi sabilillah, Jihad in the way of Allah which means a violent form of Jihad that seeks to expand the boundaries of Islam throughout the world. Why it seeks to expand the boundaries of, uh, throughout the world? Because the uh, second part of Shariat, which is uh, Hadith, the first part is Quran. Anyone knows what, are the, what is the Shariat uh, trilogy? Anyone knows? What is Shariat? That's right. Shariat con consists of three books. The first one is uh, Quran. The second one is uh, Hadith. Hadith are the traditions or sayings, recollections of uh, Prophet's conduct. And the third one is uh, Sira or sirat e rasul or uh, also called sirat e nabvi uh, which means biography of uh, uh, the Prophet. Quran is roughly 14% of the Shariat. And uh, Hadith is about 60 to 70 percent. And um, about 15 to 25 percent is uh, Sirat e Rasul. So, the Pakistani establishment, the ideology of the classical Pakistan, as we were discussing, the ideology of classical Pakistan even today seeks to expand its, itself throughout the world as a part of Ummat. Why it does so? It does so because uh, the prophecy in Hadith is that uh, you cannot go to heaven till the entire world has become Muslim. Only after the entire world has become Muslim, the uh, last day of judgment will come. A lot of people do not want to wait for that last day, so they are in a hurry. And <laughs> There is also an exception of course, I don't know whether you know the exception. The exception is that uh, somebody who uh, does jihad fi sabirillah, jihad, jihad in the way of uh, uh, Allah, which all these uh, jayesh e muhammad and um, your, uh, what is called, lashkar e tayyaba and all these various terrorist groups do, even ISIS for that matter. All of them, uh, the inspiration is uh, that uh, you, if you, if you do this, then you don't have to wait for the last judgment. Then uh, you can go directly to Jannat. And uh, of course, Jannat is beautifully described. All that 72 plus 28 or whatever. Uh, this is the founding principle of the classical state of Pakistan. Now, I have tried to firm up the basic ideological foundation of the classic state of Pakistan. Now we come to Hindu Pakistan. So as I said in the beginning that uh, I have uh, uh, tried to deconstruct it in a semantic uh, fashion and what I say that uh, Hindu Pakistan means uh, the idea of the Hindu land of the pure. So, if you had to have a Hindu land of the pure, a theoretical Hindu land of the pure, what would it be like? So, what is it is going to be like, that would mean that you have to basically go to the foundational principle that would govern this kind of a state. We have had these kind of states in the past. What uh, is uh, loosely called uh, dharmic states, the states governed by dharma. Uh, but let's not 
go into the nuances of uh, uh, dharma as such. We just go uh, to the fundamentals of uh, what a Hindu way of life presupposes or even lays down. Unfortunately, I have this uh, great difficulty that uh, the scriptures in India, in Indian philosophy, in Sanatan Dharma, and uh, if you take the uh, definition of Vishnu Purana, which I recited right in the beginning, if you take that, uh, then uh, I, I am in a hopeless quandary. Because uh, there would be tens of millions of uh, pages of scriptures that we have to find out from. So, what I will do is that uh, I will stick to a generally accepted principle among Sanatanis, uh, what is called Prasthantrai, that is the Upanishad, the Brahma Sutra, and the Bhagavad Gita. And we don't have time to discuss the Upanishads and Brahma Sutra here, so I will stick to the Gita because Gita is basically the essence of all that is there. Gita, Sugita, Kartavya, Kimanya, Shastra, Vistray. If you learn Gita well, then you don't have to learn much else. So, what is the basic foundational principle of Sanatana Dharma laid out in Gita? Of course, there will be many versions, but the one that I like the most is that uh, there are two particular shlokas which I always recite to lay out the basic foundational principle, and that agrees actually basic with the Isha was uh, the Isha Upanishad. That uh, first verse of uh, Isha Upanishad that say, it says that uh, <coughs> Isha Vasa Midam Sarvam Yatkin Chagatyam Jan. So Krishna says uh, Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Name Dveshwasti Na Priya. If you compare it with uh, the uh, Islamic uh, principles, it is totally different. Because here what is what is saying that I am equal in all beings, all beings, not just human beings. I am equally present in all beings, na me dve shoste, na priya. Neither I dislike anyone, nor do I love anyone. Similarly, there is again <coughs> Another one in the similar way that says Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishthantam Parameshwaram. That Parameshwar resides equally in all beings. Again, all beings, not just human beings. Parameshwar resides equally in all beings. Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishthantam Parameshwaram. Vinashyatsu Avinashyantam. Yaha pashyati, sa pashyati. That who sees the indestructible in the destructible, he is the one who actually sees. So these are the, according to me, the foundational ideology of Sanatana Dharma. Now, this has also been taken to mean various other things that I will come to because we have to make these nuances. Otherwise, what happens is that a lot of apologia is created around this and some people have even interpreted it to mean a pacific kind of ideology. Of course, we all know that Bhagavad Gita is not preaching pacifism in any manner whatsoever. So. Now we go back to the beginning of uh, Bhagavad Gita. 
where Arjun is uh, having great doubts about the value of a war and uh, he's given up. He says this is futile. Why should we do all this? And uh, it is at that time there are certain things that uh, Krishna tells him which has to be read with what I have said. Because uh, Gita has to be read as a whole. It cannot be read in isolation. So, in the beginning when he is having doubt, then Krishna tells Arjun and he told, tells him Klaivyam Masma Gamaha Partha Naitatthu Upapadyate Shudram Hridaya Daurvalyam Tekto Tishtha Parantap He actually calls him, asks him to get up, asks him to shed his uh, inferiority, Shudram. Shudram means a complex of inferiority. Hridaya Daurvalyam, of course, is weakness of heart. Klaivyam Masvagama Partha Naitattu Upapadyate, it doesn't behove you. Shudram Hridaya Daurvalyam Uttishtha Parantapa, get up and fight. Also, he tells him that if you are going to fight, then you have to fight with a very, very equable mind. Sukhudukhe same kritva, klabha labho jaya jayo. You have to treat the two imposters the same. In fact, this is because I am also involved in a lot of sports. And this is what we see that we are teaching our kids today, especially in um, cricket and we tell them look you just perfect your process don't bother about um, what is going to happen because if they if they um, keep worrying too much about what is going to happen on the field then they go and underperform this is the uh, psychological deduction that has been made and today all coaches every coach teaches his board just perfect the process just perfect the process don't bother about the result is the same thing. Then we have got this uh, strange concept of uh, Ahinsa Paramodharma and uh, what is called Vasudhaya Kutumbakam. Every time you talk about Hindu philosophy and the people who throw the Hindu Pakistan at you, they will invariably talk about these two terms. That look, Hinduism means Ahinsa Paramo Dharma and Hinduism means Vasudhaya Vakutambakam. I have always, uh, in every talk these days, I am asked about these two terms and I explain this and I have explained a little bit of this in my book also and I will explain this in fair detail in the next one as well. And the next one it will be <coughs> in much greater detail. I will also give you a little bit of preview of that. Uh, uh, what is called a, a sneak peep. So, the Ahinsa Paramo Dharma, it occurs in Mahabharata, but where does it occur? Anyone? It occurs in Shantipur, after the war is over. After the war is over and uh, everyone has gone to Bhishma to uh, get the lessons from him, it is at that time Ahinsa Paramo Dharma occurs. And why Ahinsa Paramo Dharma does not occur before the war is that uh, Hinsa and Ahinsa is, they are facets of your Manas and Chit. Hinsa and Ahinsa are not facets of your action. So, if you are doing something to kill your enemy who has mounted an unjust war on you and you do it with the attitude Sukhudukkham Samekritva Labha Labha Jaya Jayo then that you are not committing Hinsa at the level of your Manas and Chit. That is the kind of 
hinsa or ahinsa the differentiation that has been made throughout mahabharat if you read my book i have tried to make it simpler for people and i have said that kriya and karma that your kriya is not the same as your karma that your kriya is your apparent action but the karma is that mental state behind that action and i always give this simple example i say that you go you, you go to a temple ki aaj mangalwar hai aaj hanuman ji ke yahan jana hai and you go there hanuman ji and there you see somebody who you you see your rival and then you go to hanuman ji and you pray to him so apparently everybody is saying ki bhai bada bhakta aadmi hai badhiya hanuman ji ki pooja kar raha hai hanuman chalisa pad raha hai sab kuch kar raha hai but you are telling hanuman ji hanuman ji isko jo hai na iska ilaj kar dena मेरे को कुछ नहीं चाहिए आप तो इसका इलाज कर देना दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन योर क्रिया एंड कर्म योर अपेरेंट क्रिया इज दैट यू आर डूइंग पूजा यू आर डूइंग वर्शिप एवरीबॉडी थिंग्स दिस मैन इज वेरी वेरी पायस एंड बड़ा हनुमान जी का भक्त है बहुत बढ़िया काम कर रहा है बट देर इज हिंसा इन योर माइंड दैट इज योर कर्म अल्टीमेटली जो कर्म फल मिलेगा आपको द फ्रूट ऑफ योर कर्म विल बी ऑफ your mental state not of your apparent action so that is where you have to distinguish between hinsa and ahinsa there is a very very nice what is called upakhyan a story in mahabharat it is mentioned by my good friend sandeep balakrishna in his book 70 years of secularism and that is called the kanika upakhyan so before the lakshagraha incident i think most people here sitting here would know the lakshagraha incident before the lakshagraha incident a guy called kanika is brought by shakuni to duryodhan and this kanik teaches duryodhan and shakuni that look dharma adharma is not important what is important is the expansion of your empire and territory so that's not very different from the idea of the old uh, that classical pakistan and uh, all kind of uh, deceit and treachery is allowed so duryodhan and shakuni they have always been finding dhritaraj to be a bit reluctant so they they take this kanik guy to dhritaraj and then kanik very beautifully explains the nuances of empire building and why it is important and why it is a proper kshatriya dharma to expand your empire without any regard for such tender considerations like dharma and all and dhritarashtra acquiesces he agrees dhritarashtra is a very interesting character in mahabharat he sometimes believed to be very very neutral but uh, his selfishness and his love for his son has always prevailed now contrast this with the try and contrast this with the apparent deceit played by krishna in mahabharat there are plenty of instances so all of us know that now i'll just leave you to ponder over this that whatever is done by krishna is regarded as dharma and therefore not regarded as hinsa but whatever is done by duryodhan and shakuni is regarded as adharma and therefore regarded as hinsa that again fortifies my point about kriya and karma my simple point is that 
if we are looking at a hindu pakistan then we are looking at a concept of the pure foundation of hinduism then what is bad about it vasudev kutumbakam is something I, I i mentioned it you cannot let vasudev kutumbakam come into it you know vasudev kutumbakam is again uh, thrown at uh, hindus as some kind of a great pacific idea they which they must adhere to now vasudev kutumbakam is basically occurred in uh, um, the the first instance of uh, vasudev kutumbakam is in mahopanishad and in mahopanishad it uh, occurs in a very very spiritual temporal kind of a situation where you are expanding the highest consciousness into the highest realms of cosmos and it is in that context that that particular shlok occurs in mahopanishad ayam nijo paro ved ganam lagu chetasam the word is chetasam chetana chetana is consciousness चेतसांग चेतना इज नॉट योर एवरीडे रूटीन सो गणनाम लघु चेतसाम उदार चरिता नाम तो वसुदैव कुटुंबकम दिस कम्स फ्रॉम अपनिषद नाउ वॉट हैपन इवन इन दी ओल्डर टाइम दैट पीपल स्टार्टेड कोटिंग दिस टू देयर राइवल्स एंड काइंड ऑफ स्टार्टेड डिजामिंग दैम के लुक दिस इज द ओल्ड सेइंग फ्रॉम अपनिषद कम्स फ्रॉम एन उपनिषद यू मस्ट फॉलो दैम एंड वंस द अपोनेंट और द राइवल बिकम डिजाम देन दे कम विद फुल फोर्स and conquer him so what happened was that uh, in hitopadesh a commentary was written on this particular phenomenon and that actually explains what this vasudev kutumbakam should actually be read as this is a story i'll just narrate this story briefly it says that there was a jackal and there was a um, uh, deer i forget the name what was the i think the call was shudra buddhi and uh, the the deer was chitrang or ch- some somewhere it is written as chitrangad and there was a crow which is called subuddhi these are the characters there in that so subuddhi shudra buddhi and chitrangad these are the three main characters in that story and um, this chitrangad is uh, living happily in a uh, forest and uh, he's got so buddhi for company and this uh, shudra buddhi he saunters over to his place and looks at this deer and he starts craving for his meat okay this uh, this this deer is very healthy and i must somehow get to bury my teeth into his flesh how to do it because if i try he will run away he is very fast so how to do it so he goes to the deer and tells him look friend i have come from outside and uh, i need a place to stay why don't you give me shelter now deer of course is an animal of the forest he does know his way about and he does know a few things about the call so he t- tells him hey, look i know your kind and i am not going to get into this trap you you just get lost from here uh, this solo ये तो मुश्किल हो गई अब क्या किया जाए सो ही रिसाइट्स दिस श्लोक टू द डियर एम निजो परो ये तो गणना हम लगो चेत दिस पुअर डियर कि श्लोक बोल रहा है ये तो ये यार श्लोक बोल रहा है ये तो बड़ा विद्वान है तो ऐसे विद्वान को तो शरण देनी चाहिए ये भी लिखा हुआ है शास्त्रों में कि भाई विद्वान को शरण दो जस्ट यू नो puts a few caveat i hope you will not uh, do a mischief you know no aap dekh rahe ho main to sanskrit ka gyata hu main sab janta hu shastra vas mein no chance so he says ki okay i am i'm very impressed us aap ko bata du aaj bhi koi shlok padhta hai na to hum log bade impress ho jate hain itna impress hone ki zarurat nahi uske piche jaiye So he takes him to his uh, place where he lives he lives in the a little cave and there's a t- uh, tree there where subuddhi that crow he lives in subuddhi sees this fellow coming with the uh, this shudra buddhi 
दज कॉल एंड टेल्स मी वॉट द हेल यू डूइंग पागल हो गया क्या ये क्या कर रहा है अगे नो नो यू डोंट नो दिस कॉल इज नॉट एन ऑर्डिनरी वन ही रिसाइट श्लोकाज ही नोज शास्त्र कह रहे बेवकूफ शास्त्र वास्त्र कुछ नहीं है तेरे को बेवकूफ बनाने की चाह पर नो नो वे आई थिंक यू आर रॉन्ग एंड यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड श्लोकाज एंड आई अंडरस्टैंड दी शास्त्र सो आई नो दैट दिस सेलो वॉट इज सेंग इज एब्सोल्यूटली ट्रू इज शास्त्र सम्मत बड़ी दे वर्ड यूज शास्त्र सम्मत बात कर रहा है वॉट कैन द क्रो डू दिस फेलो इज बेंट ऑन कमिटिंग सुइसाइड एंड ही इवन द रेट्स ए स्टोरी टू हेम विद इन द स्टोरी देर इज अनदर स्टोरी आई लीव दैट दैट स्टोरी इज रिगार्डिंग दैन ईगल हुज बिकम ओल्ड एंड एन कैट कम्स एंड डिसीव समथिंग टू दैट इफेक्ट बात दिस गाय इज एडमेंट कह नो ये तो श्लोक पढ़ता है शास्त्र जानता है मैं तो इसको रखूंगा ही रखूंगा ठीक है भाई क्या करें बट बी ऑन योर गार्ड आई एम ऑल्सो वॉचिंग ऑल दैट और अल्टीमेटली एज यू वुड एक्सपेक्ट दे कॉल वॉट ही डज इज दैट ही लोअर्स इम इन टू अ ट्रैप एंड वेन ई गेट्स ट्रैप्ड एट अ फार्मर्स field and he sits there salivating and this guy is now going to starve out and die and then i will have my feast a deer finds him sitting nearby and he tells him ki are good yaar you come uh, you use your sharp teeth and uh, you please cut out this leather net and free me i am very happy that you are here wo kehta hai bhai aisa hai ki aaj to mera fast hai aaj ravivar hai aaj mera fast hai i cannot touch this leather so you please wait until tomorrow then i will cut this net and free you of course that crow did not find the deer coming back at the uh, at his routine time so he went around and he found this guy trapped and then they worked out some kind of a scheme by which the crow was able to free the deer and uh, the jackal got killed this is how hitopanishad explains vasudhaiva kutumbakam So whenever somebody throws vasudhaiva kutumbakam at you please feel empowered and use this hitopadesh story so i'll just sum it up that in a hindu land of the pure everyone is to be treated equal everybody is treated to be treated in an inclusive manner the basic tenets of dharma will prevail and there will be no cowardice what's wrong with such a place what's wrong with hindu pakistan i think uh, if somebody throws hindu pakistan at me as a damn good since you cannot give me hindu hindustan if you want to give me hindu pakistan i'll take it thank you, thank you.